From around the globe, it's theCUBE with digital coverage of AWS Public Sector Partner Awards. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hi, and welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and we're here at the AWS Public Sector. Their Partner Awards, really enjoying this. We get to talk to some of the diverse ecosystem, as well as they've all brought along their customers, some really phenomenal case studies. Happy to welcome to the program two first-time time guests. First of all, we have Jared Bell. He's the Chief Engineer of Self-Response Operational Readiness at T-Rex Solutions, and T-Rex is the award winner for the most customer-obsessed mission base in FedSiv. So, Jared, congratulations to you and the T-Rex uh, team. And also joining him, his customer, Michael Thiem. He's the Assistant Director for the Decennial Census Program, Systems and Contracts for the U.S. Census Bureau. Thank you so much both for joining us. Thank you. Good to be here. All right, Jared, Jared if we could start with you. Uh, as, as I said, you're an award winner. Uh, sit in the Fed Civ space. You brought us the the Census Bureau, which most people understand uh, the importance of of that government program. Uh, coming up on that, you know, every ten years, I've been hearing you know TV and radio ads talking about it. But Jared, if you could just give us a thumbnail uh, of T Rex uh, and what 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 you do in the AWS ecosystem. Yeah. So yeah, again, my name is Jared Bell, and I work for T Rex Solutions. Uh, T Rex is a a mid-tier IT federal uh, contracting company in Southern Maryland, uh, recently graduated from HubZone status. And so T-Rex really focuses on four key areas, uh, infrastructure and cloud uh, modernization, um, cybersecurity and active cyber defense, big data management and analytics, and then overall um, enterprise system integration. And so we've been, you know, AWS partner for quite some time now. And with Decennial, you know, we got to really exercise a lot of the bells and whistles that are out there and really uh, put it all to the test. All right, well, Michael, uh, you know, so many people in IT, we talk about the uh, peaks and valleys that we have. Uh, not too many companies uh, in organizations say, well, we know exactly, you know, that 10 year spike of activity that we're going to have. Uh, I, I know there's lots of work that goes on beyond that, but it, tell us a little bit your, your role inside the, the, the Census Bureau um, and uh, what's under your purview. Yes, uh, the the Census Bureau is is actually does hundreds of surveys every year, but the uh, the decennial census is our sort of our main flagship uh, uh, activity, and uh, I am the assistant director under our associate director uh, for the IT and for the contracts for the the decennial census. Wonderful, and and if you could tell us a little bit the the, the project that you're working on uh, that 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 eventually. Uh, but pulled T Rex in. Sure, this is the 2020 census, and uh, and and the, the the challenge of the 2020 census is we've this is we've done the census since 1790 in the United States. It's a, a pillar, a foundation of our democracy, and this was the most technologically advanced census we've ever done. Actually, up until 2020, we have done our censuses mostly by pen. Uh, paper and pencil. And uh, this is a, a census where we uh, opened up the internet for people to respond from home. We can have people respond on the phone. People can respond with an iPhone or a, a, an Android device. We try to make it as easy as possible and as secure as possible for people to respond to the census uh, where they were. And we wanted to meet the respondent where they were. All right, so uh, Jared, I'd love you to chime in here because I'm here to talk about you know, the technology adoption you know, how much was already in, in plans there? Where did T-Rex uh, intersect uh, with, with, with the census activity? Sure, yeah, so, you know, census deserves a lot of credit for their kind of innovative approach with this technical, technical integrator contract, uh, which T-Rex was fortunate enough to win. Um, when we came in, you know, we were, we were just ramping up for the 2018 test. Uh, we really only had 18 months to go from start to, you know, a live, um, a live operational test uh, to prepare for 2020. Um, and it was, you know, it was really exciting, exciting to be brought in on such a large mission critical, um, mission critical project. I think this is one of the largest uh, federal IT projects in the cloud to date. Um, and so, you know, when we came in, we had to really, uh, you know, bring together a whole lot of solutions. I mean, the internet self response, which is what we're here to talk about today, was was one of the major components. But we really had um, a lot of other activities that we had to engage in. You know, we had to design and prepare. Um, an IT solution to support 260 field offices, 16,000 field staff, 400,000 mobile devices and, and users that were going to go out and, and knock on doors for enumeration. Uh, so it was really a, a big effort that um, you know, we, were, we were honored to be a part of. You know, and on top of that, um, T-Rex really brought to the table a lot of its past experience with cybersecurity and active cyber defense. 
Uh, so, you know, because of the importance of all this data, you know, we had to roll in security all throughout. And I think T-Rex was, was prepared for that and, and did a great job. Um, and then, you know, overall, I think the, not, not necessarily directly to your, to your question, but I think, you know, one of the things that we were able to do to make ourselves successful and to really um, engage uh, with, with the Census Bureau and, and be effective with our stakeholders was that we really built a culture of decennial within the technical integrator. You know, we had um, brown bags and working sessions to really teach the, the team the importance of the decennial, um, you know, not just as a, as a career move, but also as an as a important activity for our country. And so I think that that really helped the team, you know, internalize that mission and really drove kind of our, our dedication to the census mission and, and really made us, made us effective. And again, a lot of the T-Rex leadership had a lot of experience there um, from past decennials. And so they really brought that, that mindset to the team. And I think it, it really paid off. Michael, if you could bring us inside a little a bit, a bit the project, uh, you know, 18 months, uh, obviously you have a specific deadline you, you need to hit for that. Help us understand kind of the architectural considerations that you had there, uh, any concerns that you had. And I, I have to imagine uh, that just the global activities, uh, the, the impacts of uh, COVID-19 has impacted uh, some of the, uh, the, the, the end stage, if you will, activities here in 2020. Absolutely. Yeah, the decennial census is, is a, I, I believe, a very unique IT problem. Uh, we have essentially 10 months out of the decade that we have to uh, scale up to gigantic and, and then scale back down to, to uh, run the rest of the Census Bureau's activities. But uh, our project, you know, every, every uh, zero, year, year ending in zero, uh, April 1st is Census Day. Now, April 1st continued to be Census Day in 2020, but we also had COVID uh, essentially taking over virtually everything in this country and, and in fact, in the world. Uh, so so the, uh, the way that we uh, set up to do the census with the cloud and with the, the IT approach and modernization that we took actually, frankly, very luckily, uh, enabled us to kind of get through this whole thing. Now, we, we haven't had, uh, Jared discussed a little bit, the fact that we're here to talk about our internet self-response. We haven't had one second of downtime for our response. We've taken 77 million, uh, I think even more than 78 million uh, responses uh, from uh, households. We have, Out of the 140 million households in the United States, we've gotten 77 million people to respond on our internet uh, site without one second of downtime. Uh, uh, Good user experience, a good uh, supportability, uh, but but the the project has always been the same. It's just this time we're actually doing it with much more technology, and and hopefully the uh, the way that 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 uh, the cloud has supported us uh, will prove to be really effective for for the COVID nineteen situation because we've had changes in our plans, difference in time frames. Uh, we are actually not even going into the field, or we're just starting to go into the field these these next few weeks, where we would have almost been coming out of the field at this time. So that flexibility, that expandability, that elasticity, that that being in the cloud uh, gives all of our IT pro our, our IT capabilities uh, was really valuable this time. Well, Jared, uh, I'm wondering if you can comment on that. All, all of the things that Michael just said, you know, seem like, you know, that just the spotlight pieces that I look to cloud for, uh, you know, being able to uh, scale on demand, being able to use what I need when I need it, uh, and then dial things down when, when I don't. And especially, uh, you know, I don't want to have to, you know, I want to limit how much people actually need to get involved. So help us understand a little bit, you know, what AWS services underneath, uh, we're supporting this and, and anything else around the cloud uh, deployment. Sure, yeah, yeah, Michael's spot on. I mean, the cloud is, is tailor-made for, for our operation and activity here. Um, you know, I think all told, we used over 30 of the AWS FedRAMP solutions um, in standing up our environment across all those 52 system of systems that we were, we were working with. Um, you know, just to name a few, I mean, internet self-response alone, you know, relied heavily on auto-scaling groups, um, elastic load balancers, you know, we relied a lot on Lambda functions, um, DynamoDB. We were one of the first adopters of the DynamoDB global tables, which we use for uh, session persistence across regions. Um, and then on top of that, you know, the data was all flowing down into RDS databases. And then from there to, you know, the, um, the census data lake, which was built on EMR and elastic search capabilities. You know, and that's just to name a couple. I mean, you know, we, we had, um, we ran the gamut of the AWS services to make all this work, and they really helped us accelerate 
And as Michael said, you know, we, we stood this up expecting to be working together in a war room, watching everything hand in hand. Um, and because of the way we were able to architect it in partnership with AWS, um, we all had to go out and, and stay at home. You know, the infrastructure remained rock solid. We didn't have to worry about, um, you know, being hands on with the equipment. And, you know, um, again, the, the ability to automate and, and integrate with those solutions, cloud formation and things like that really let us keep a small agile team of, of um, you know, DevSecOps there to, to handle the deployments. And we were doing full scale deployments with, you know, one or two people in the middle of the night um, without any problems. So it really streamlined things for us and helped us keep uh, tight and agile for sure. Michael, I'm, I'm curious about uh, what, what kind of training your team need to go through to take advantage of this solution. So fr from bringing it up to uh, the, the ripple effect, as you said, uh, you, you're only now starting to look at who would go into the field, who uses devices and the like. Uh, so help us understand really the, 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 the human aspect of, of undergoing this technology. Sure, uh, now the, the, the census always has to ramp up this sort of uh, immediate workforce we hire. Uh, we actually uh, process over 3 million people. I think 3.9 million people applied to work for the Census Bureau. And each decade we have to come up with a, a training program and uh, uh, actually training sites all over the country and the IT to support those. Now, again, modernization for the 2020 Census didn't only uh, involve the things like our internet self-response, it also involved our training. We have all online training now. We, have, we used to have what, we're, what we called verbatim training where we had uh, individual teachers all over the country in places like libraries, essentially reading text exactly the same way to exactly the, the, the uh, it, it, over and over again to our to the people that we train. But now it's it's all electronic. Uh, it allows us to, and, and this goes to the COVID uh, situation as well, it allows us to bring only three people in at a time to do training, uh, essentially get them started with, uh, with our uh, um, device that we have them use when they're knocking on doors and, and then go home and do the training and then come back to work with us all with a minimal uh, contact, uh, human contact sort of uh, model. And, and that, even though we designed it uh, differently, the, the way that we set the technology up this time allowed us to change that design very quickly, get people trained, not essentially stop the census. We, we essentially had to slow it down because we weren't sure exactly when it was going to be safe to go knocking on door to door, to door but, uh, but we were able to do the training and, and all of that worked and continues to work uh, phenomenally. Wonderful. Uh, Jared, I w wonder if you've got any lessons learned from working with the census group that might be applicable to uh, kind of the broader uh, customers out there. Uh, sure, well, working with the census, you know, it was, it was really, a, really a great group to work with. I mean, um, one of the few groups I work with who have such a clear vision and understanding of what they want their final outcome to be. Um, I think, again, you know, for us, the, the internalization of the decennial mission, right, it's so big, it's so important. Um, I think that because we adopted it early on and we felt that we were true partners with the uh, we had a lot of um, a lot of credibility with our counterparts, and I think that they understood that we were we were in it with them together, um, and 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 that was really important. Um, I would also say that you know because we're talking about the GovCloud solutions that we worked, um, you know, we also engaged heavily with the AWS uh, engineering group and and in partnership with them. You know, we relied on the infrastructure event management services they offer, and and it was able to give us a lot of a lot of uh, great insight into our into our architecture and our systems and monitoring to really make us feel like we were ready ready for the uh, the big show when the time came. Um, so you know, I think for for me, another lesson learned there is that you know um, the cloud providers like AWS they're not just a vendor; they're a partner. And I think that uh, you know going forward, we'll continue to engage with those partners early and often. Michael, the question I have for you is, you know, what would you uh, say to your peers? What lessons did you have learned and how much of what you've done for the census uh, do you think will be applicable to all those other surveys that you do uh, in, in between the, the, the big 10 year uh, surveys? All right, I think we've actually uh, set a good uh, milestone for the rest of the Census Bureau. Uh, we, the, the modernization that the 2020 Census has allowed, uh, since it is our flagship, really is something that we hope we can continue through the decade and, and into the next census, as a matter of fact. Uh, but I think one of the big lessons learned I wanted to talk about was we have always struggled with disaster recovery. And one of the things that having the cloud and our partners in the cloud uh, has helped us do is essentially uh, 
take advantage of the resilience of the cloud. So, so there are data cent uh, centers all over the country. Uh, if we had ever had a downtime somewhere, we knew that we were going to be able to stay up. Uh, we, for the decennial census, we've never had the budget to, to pay for uh, persistent disaster recovery. And the cloud essentially gives us that kind of capability. Uh, Jared talked a lot about security. I think we have taken our security posture to a whole uh, different level, uh, something that uh, allowed us to essentially, as I said before, keep our internet self-response free of, of hacks and uh, uh, breaches through this whole process and through a much longer process than we even intended to keep it open. Um, so so we there, there's a lot here that I think we want to bring into the next decade, a, a lot that we want to continue, uh, and we want the census to uh, essentially stay as modern as, as it has become for 2020. Well, I, I will tell you personally, Michael, uh, I, I did take the census online. It okay. was really easy to do. I uh, definitely recommend if they haven't already, everybody listening out there, so important that you you know participate in the census so that they have uh, complete data. So Michael, Jared, thank you so much. Uh, Jared, congratulations to your team for, for winning uh, the award and you know such a great customer. Michael, uh, thank you so much for what you and your team are doing. Uh, appreciate all that's being done, especially in these challenging times. Thank you, and thanks for doing the census. <laughs> All right, and stay tuned for more coverage of the AWS Public Sector Partner Awards. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.